All right, guys, we just finished watching the Google I.O. event where they spent, I feel like it was one full calendar week talking about AI features before getting into the Pixel hardware. I get it. I understand it's a developer event, but maybe next time let's have the Pixel hardware be in its own separate event so that we don't have to sit through all the developer stuff. Before we get to the Pixel hardware, my chat, there were like 800 people in the chat watching along with me and they were getting very, very impatient. So I'm gonna do in this video, we're gonna quickly recap what we saw at that event. Let's just jump over to the Google store because that's going to be the easiest way to get all the details. So the first piece of hardware that they announced is the Pixel 7a and it is exactly what we thought it was going to be. We kind of had everything about this thing well out, way, way out from the actual announcement. You do at the Google store get this cool coral color. Otherwise, if you're going to Best Buy, you can get it in blue, black, or white, but that coral color is pretty decent. Take a look at the technical specs here. You're looking at a 6.1 inch display. I guess I should also say 499 if you finance it. You're looking at 20 bucks a month through the Google Store for you know, 24 month financing. Not bad at all. Eight gigs of RAM. It's UFS 3.1, which is not the newest, but it seems like it's probably going to be fine. Uh, Google Tensor G2 chip. So the same chip that is in the Pixel 7 Pro is here in the Pixel 7a. VPN by Google One at no extra cost is actually quite cool. The cameras are really fascinating. So there's a 64 megapixel main sensor up from a very, very old 12 megapixel sensor that they've been using forever. This should be a really substantial upgrade, which should bring it not quite in line with the Pixel 7, but relatively close to it. There's also a 13 megapixel ultra wide. The front facing camera is a 13 megapixel sensor, pretty standard stuff there. You're going to get all the camera features, all of the cool Google stuff that you're used to getting, but in a relatively inexpensive uh, form factor here, you're going to have a 90 hertz refresh rate, five watt wireless charging is actually on board now. What do we have in terms of wired charging? Does it tell us this? Here you go. So it looks like a 4,300 milliamp hour battery, almost 4,400 milliamp hour battery. They, there's some variation in these, which I know sounds weird, but whatever. Up to 18 watts for wired charging. So not the fastest charging in the world, but again, for that price of $499, you are going to have an incredible camera. The refresh rate's been upped. The wireless charging is there. You've got the new Tensor G2. It's a pretty solid phone, guys. It's, there's not much more to say about it. So the next thing that they announced, or I guess I should say that they talked about, was the Pixel tablet, which had, honestly, a rather large shocker here for me. It's only $499, and that gets you the tablet and the stand that the tablet sits on which basically turns it into a Google Home Hub. There were several other cool things here. One of the coolest ones, I think, is the fact that you can actually cast things to this device itself. That's a pretty neat thing to be able to do. Looks like it's basically an 11 inch screen. You've got the dock that it sets onto to become basically a Google Home Hub. And that does, like I said, come with the thing. 16 by 10 aspect ratio. That's better than 16 by nine for sure. You've got the Tensor G2 in this one as well. They're basically using that across the board. I think that for a tablet, this looks pretty decent and the price came in well lower than where I think a lot of us were expecting. And then the final thing that they announced was the Google Pixel Fold. And for a lot of people that were hoping this thing was going to be cheaper than the Z Fold 4, well, you were disappointed because it is $17.99. It is the same price as the Pixel Fold. It comes in white and black. 24 month financing puts you at $75 a month, which is beginning to be in that kind of expensive area. As you can see here, when folded over, it is relatively small, fairly nice for one handed use. But then when opened up, you get this 7.6 inch display, both of them running at 120 hertz. You do have a relatively large bezel on the top and bottom, which houses the selfie camera, but also a lot of the hinge hardware is up here in the bezel as well. And that helps the device be very, very thin, and apparently also helps the, the hinge be more durable. You can see here how thin this thing actually is. Very, very thin. They're calling it the thinnest foldable of all, which is funny because this is thinner than that, and also there are some foldables in other countries which are also thinner, so not literally true there. Google Tensor G2 as well on the inside of this thing. You can see you have the taskbar there, which if we can start this thing over, I don't guess I have the ability to do that. There's the taskbar, which you can swipe up from the bottom to access and then drag an app onto the screen 
to do your split screen. And just like you can see there, very, very cool. Very similar to what we have on the Z Fold devices already. You've also got the ability here as they show to drag and drop items from one app to another when you are in split screen, very Surface Duo-esque. Now they're saying this is the best camera on a foldable phone and it's not because of the hardware itself is the best as you can see here 48 megapixel rear sensor 10.8 megapixel ultra wide and then a 5x telephoto although the 5x telephoto is going to be towards the very top the hardware is fine okay in some ways it's going to be inferior to the z fold in some ways it's better than the z fold but it's got the google pixel processing and it's probably going to be one of if not the best camera setups on any foldable device of course, you do have flex mode, okay? The hinge will stop at any point and different applications will change to take advantage of that flex mode posture, just like we have on the Z Fold. And then of course, just like every other Pixel, you get all of those cool features like now playing and call screening, and there's a million other cool Pixel features, Magic Eraser, I could continue going forever and ever. And in fact, Google showed off some really impressive photo editing features coming very, very soon. They were absolutely mind-blowing, literally taking of someone, a person in the foreground of a, of a photo, not just deleting them, but moving them around and replacing the background behind them as you move them. Really impressive stuff. Looking at some other specifications, like I said, Google Tensor G2, 12 gigs of RAM, 4,800 milliamp hour battery, which is good enough to get you 24 hours. The battery life should be pretty mid-range, should be in the range of the Z Fold 4, if not a little bit better than I believe. You've got the fingerprint scanner there in the power button, which on a foldable makes a lot of sense. Now, obviously, I'm going to have a ton more to say about the Pixel Fold going forward. That video is probably going to be something for tomorrow sometime. This is just what did they announce, okay? So if you're looking for my opinions on it, I'm going to have a lot. Video probably coming tomorrow. So that's pretty much what they announced in brief. There's more details I could certainly go into, but you can go back and watch the live stream. It is available for you to go back and watch and see the chat as it was going along if you want to get even more details than that. I will drop links to the Google Store, and as they become available, I will drop affiliate links to Best Buy should you want to purchase any of these devices and help support the channel by doing this. Guys, stay tuned for more content just like this, more coverage of these Google Pixel devices. I'll see you on the next one, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.